Well, it looks like we must be coming to the end now. Benedict talking about putting off the inevitable there. We've done everything else we can, and finding that plant in the agrodomes was a huge win for us. But we like a food processor. So we're gonna have to go to Colony B and face your demons, Benedict, for the fact that you abandoned everybody. Let's go. Okay, so we need to find the mess hall. Let's check the mess hall. Okay. Well, I have a feeling it's not gonna work out for you, Benedict. Um, what are these? Are these children's drawings? Hand-drawn slogans and images from the backs of readouts. Uh, where is Pierre Tong? Okay. I guess you got a little revolution going on your hands there. Please enter room codes in correct sequence. Okay, that'll come back to bite me in the butt. I'll have to figure... Okay, sure. Uh, mess hall password required. Um, do you want to try and enter something? I don't know what. I'll try in a second. I think Benedict doesn't want to be here because he realizes he failed everybody because Colony B was such a big failure. So different families and colonists use the beds over time, most likely in a rotation. This is not how people lived. So maybe Benedict feels that because he left them and focused on Colony A, he doomed them all to die. Day since Tong left us, 128. Oh boy. He was not popular, was he? Uh, look at the terminal. Oh, this terminal here. Uh, so these are reports. From here you can access personal profiles. Let's go for personnel. So, Kaylee Pajari. Subject is dealing with the breakdown of the quality by focusing on her child. Her partner can care for their child. Subject uses spare time to exercise. Uh, Eliazar Sari, calm, uh, and he's, yeah, he's fine. Focused on keeping calm and tidy to deal with the chaos. One unchanged facet is his desire for privacy. It's fair enough. And then El Amin, uh, subject continues to work tirelessly. Uh, she hoards data on the terraforming project. She's allowed several colonists to share her quarters as space uh, becomes difficult. I suspect her passive nature allows others to abuse her kindness, however. Okay. So, projections. The colonists formed a rotating body to help organize survivors. The last uh, entry is 2059. Uh, second scouting party to Colony A has not returned. So, compromise to Colony B only worsens. With the current population, survivability is only a matter of months. Water filters continue to function, but rations are running out. The child of Colony B, uh, Pajari, has sadly succumbed to malnutrition and disease. Even her mother has abandoned her. Oh, that's sad to hear. But, you know, like in the Turing test, how can you hope that children would survive out here in such dire situations? Um, let's talk about incidents. So they tried to maintain order and justice. Uh, Rumsey was detained after his third altercation with another colonist. And he's too aggressive, becoming a liability. Um, let's exit the terminal. So there is a Zen poster here saying beginner's mind and a rather neat uh, bed. So that's probably that guy that they were talking about trying to keep things neat um, and private. Oh dear, so is this where the child used to live? Children's publications, educational toys, etc, etc. A lot messier than the other room. More children's toys. They're very elaborate. Uh, look at this cute little console here. The lavatory is sealed shut. Um, more, more toys. Probably that poor little tyke who died. Um, well, everybody died in the end, really. Yeah, so that was the mum who engaged in exercise, but I guess I can't, I can't get in there just yet. Planters have been rigged with water drips in an attempt to grow food, so they must have brought seeds back from the agrodome. So they made it to the agrodomes, which is actually closer than Colony A. Just saying. So it looks like I found the room where the girl was letting people share her space because there was no other alternative. Um, it looks like as well it's been turned into a sort of medical room too. Oh, 
that's a very good point that we haven't found the remains of anything. Um, so this is an emergency tent filled with makeshift beds. Yeah, so where, where is everybody? Are we going to find... I bet you... Actually, I bet you they are all in the mess tent, the mess hall. Um, oh, cute little sleeping area for an infant. Um, but yeah, calling it now. A sick colonist would have been easily infected, especially with ventilation poor, what awful conditions. So yeah, basically, it, we, the, our little tour of Colony B has shown that people tried to carry on living and, you know, create a community, create, you know, living spaces, everything that people need. Hudson Cartier left us to die. Oh, we don't need AI to survive. Hmm. Uh... I was not able to help, weren't you? I think I've just made Benedict angry. Um, I had no idea that the people of Colony B felt this way. I think it's best if we just continue. You did kind of leave them to die a little bit. So maybe this is the uh, disruptive person's room that he's just been throwing stuff around. Nothing else here really though. So to solve the passcode to the mess door, what I did was, this is, so it's here, please enter room codes in correct sequence. So it's El Almin, Sari, Bouchard, Rumsey, and Pajari. So what I did was I matched the profiles that we found on the terminal to the rooms that we found. I explored all the quarters to the colonists, um, found kind of, you know, key things that showed their personalities, stuff like that. So like, uh, Sari, they said that he was calm, so I matched him to the Buddhist room. So hopefully the passcode in that order with the terminal is two, three, one, six, four. So it's two, three, one, six, four. And there we go. We're in. And I bet you we find all the bodies. Um, Nano, I think the survivors in this room were trapped and they all perished together in an awful end. I think you're right. Um, which, you know, at least they kind of all went in one go. It's still... Um, how is it your fault? There was no way for me to understand the depth of suffering here, but seeing it now with you doesn't make it any easier. Those people died thinking I abandoned them. One last thing before you came back. Having a look at the east side of the room, I'm picking up a light. Oh, a light air current. So is this where Pierre was hiding out, maybe? Because... Or maybe I'm Pierre. Am I Pierre? Because I'm very suspicious about him. What was he doing? What was he up to? Oh, that's the escape ship hangar for Colony B, and it's worse than I imagined. What, has, has he taken the... Oh, okay. Okay. So, you found the last schematics. These one uh, contains highly detailed formula and notes regarding a propulsion system. With all these improvements, the escape ship can even be better uh, than we hoped for. Yeah, I think Mr. Tong is over in the corner over here. Hi. That is the body of Director Pierre Tong, which is a most surprising discovery because I thought maybe he'd betrayed everybody. Uh, he left the colony and never returned. So what is he doing here? He's holding a data pad when he died. Thankfully, it has some power. It appears Mr. Tong was working on a way to improve the escape ship. His data pad contains detailed plans for upgrades. These schematics you found must have been the first draft of these upgrades. He must have worked on them before leaving the colony. So here's an audio file. Jean, I know you doubted me. I know you thought I'd given up on everyone. Maybe for a little while I did, but as usual, I couldn't accept defeat. So I found a way. I made these plans to help those who were left. Of course, I hoped you'd be there when you got back, but you weren't. Nobody was. Jean, you have to believe me. I came back to help. But when I returned, everyone was either gone or dead, and I was too late. I saw their signs. They thought I had failed them completely. And I guess I have. Worst of all, though, I failed you. I hope you find this. I hope you're still out there and you come back. These plans can help you survive. Two years ago. Okay, let's head on home. Well, here we are, Pierre. How are you going to take this news? Um... I found you. Yep, I found you. But you're not the traitor you think you are. 
and yes, it does sound very complicated. He didn't realise what he meant to the other colonists, that his personal quest would be interpreted as desertion by then. Isn't it crazy? He was doing exactly what I'm doing for you now, trying to fix an escape ship, trying to make it better so you can survive. But he wasn't being selfish, he was trying to do it for Jean. To, give, uh, to at least give him a chance. I saw some of the scan data that uh, Benedict processed from our trip to the colony. They hated me, him I suppose. They didn't really understand. What's worse though is they never realised how much I tried to help them. At that point though, we were all doomed. I couldn't help Jean, I couldn't help the people who trusted me, and I couldn't even help myself. It's not true. I, I mean, I'm a great friend. I'm just saying nice things at this point, to be honest. I think you failed in that you could have maybe done it in a way that they would have known, you know, and maybe even helped you and supported you. Oh, don't you start the Turing test on me. Um, the person right in front of you right now was that, would I make different decisions? Would things work out? Um, possibly. I mean, I think it's too late for the Turing test, to be honest. I have to think so, even if the other me, if his motiv motives were genuine, he still failed. I have to think that now I might prove more able. I appreciate you telling me the truth. I think you'd make a pretty good leader yourself, Nano. Well, a part of being a leader is telling someone when they're acting a bit, like, you know, they need to buck their, their ideas up, you know? And you need to buck your ideas up, you and some of the other people here, Jesus Christ. Um, so I found your schematics. This will help me a lot, thanks. The other me was trying to solve the problems I am now, uh, only he had to do it on pieces of paper in his head. You see, the problem with the ship was that we couldn't predict what is happening with the planet right now. So I guess maybe if I didn't find all these extra little bits and pieces, it would have lessened my chances of actually escaping. Um, maybe there's multiple endings. Um, the purple egg is fine. Once you go into space, it should operate as intended. The bottom half, which is the finest first stage rocket, needs improvement, and we don't have the ability to heavily modify the ship since you're the only one left. We've only got so many hands. Um, so this is a big deal. Yeah, so I reckon if I hadn't found the schematics and stuff like that, then maybe it wouldn't have worked out as well, and I would have just been blown up into space. So yeah, let me tell you about Colony B and how messed up it is. They were good people, smart, driven, Maybe part of me thought that people would survive on their own, that they didn't need me. Obviously, uh, that wasn't completely true. I didn't know how to be a leader, in a way. Perhaps the other, the other colonists needed a beacon, perhaps. Sometimes when you trust and respect people, you actually neglect them. You don't give them the support they need because you don't think they need it. I demanded a lot from people, and they always delivered. In leaving Colony B, I guess I took everyone else for granted. But I couldn't see that at the time. They probably thought I abandoned them when I probably thought they'd be okay. It was an arrogant mistake. Um, yeah, it was. I, I do think it was an arrogant mistake. You could have helped them. You know, you could have told them and had them help you. And I, th yeah, I think you need to be told. Before signing up with Hudson Cartier, I was pretty much alone with... So why were you ele elected as a leader? Like, I wouldn't... I mean, I wouldn't elect a, a lone wolf, a leader. Um, I remember when I was quite young and still at school, being both very presumptuous and aggressive in my studies. One time, another student and I produced detailed technical reports for an, an engineering class. Schematics, rational, uh, rationale of real-world applications, that sort of thing. Um... So he read the other student's report, and I knew it wasn't as good as mine. It was solid, well-researched, but not creative. But you got the same grade. So he doesn't seem to understand. I made everyone's life hell for a few days, demanding to know how they could merit our efforts equally, even though my work was better. Um, wow, really? Yeah, that's... No, I, I'm not going to applaud you for that. that. That's one where you need to learn a little bit of humility. I wouldn't let the administration go without changing the mark. I felt my work had to be recognised as superior. Yeah, yeah, you're an asshole. You, that, that's not really how, how, wow, undermining that of the girls. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you're still referring to it is better. And yeah, you definitely needed to mature from that. I realised how selfish and petty that all was. That was pretty selfish and petty. So I looked for me all those years ago and anyone reminded me of that didn't make the cut. Well, at least you've learned from it. 
Learning about the fate of the other me, that wasn't easy, but your willingness to be honest with me has only made me more dedicated to completing the work I've started here. This facility may be a lost cause, and I may never forgive myself for its failure, but spending time with you has reminded me of something important. The fact that we're not perfect, that we can't always be judged to be the highest in our field, that doesn't matter. A long time ago, I couldn't have said that. And that's right, you don't always have to be the best around. Yeah. Uh, You're welcome. And goodbye, Pierre. Pierre.